Hi, everybody. Good morning for me. Uh, good, uh, good evening for Semi, I guess, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, um, it's around 8, 8.15 in Melbourne right now. Okay, great. Uh, right now I am in Paris. He is in uh, Melbourne. And you can see me, you can see me uh, in multiple uh, screens right now. But uh, I will show you uh, a little bit um, Volume Spirits Food Lab. Uh, right now I am in the kitchen uh, making this broadcast. Uh, and Semi, as he said, uh, he's right now in uh, Melbourne. I can and, I have uh, a view of uh, buildings, but it's not that good. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, but you ma you mentioned that people are uh, even swimming because it is summer right now there, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean it's raining uh, a bit, but in the day they were uh, they were in the beach on the um, I forgot. There's a San Kilda, I think that's the name of the place, and they were just going to the beach. A lot of people were walking around. It's summer now, so we have longer days in here. Also, it's quite nice actually. I can't complain. I mean, it's uh, quite cold in Istanbul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it is also quite cold, you know, in Paris, just before <laughs> <Yeah>. Christmas. <laughs> right, exactly. Through that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you will be here uh, in in two weeks, also. Yep. So uh, uh, I hope the, the 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 radical climate change won't affect you in in a bad way. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so too. I hope so too. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, uh, yeah. Semi, um, we are doing uh, a collaboration with you together, right? And yes, exactly. uh, uh, right now, as a part of the uh, broadcasting series uh, of contract, um, we, in a way, try to uh, start to this collaboration, uh, like baby steps. Uh, exactly. And um, one of the collaboration of, uh, of this project is Kirk Project, uh, um, and you are the, uh, one of the co-founders of it. And yeah. uh, um, uh, we're planning to uh, organize a... Um, a tour, uh, basically in Europe. So what I uh, today want to discuss with you, not discuss, but you know, I will ask just uh, basic questions to uh, open up, um, uh, open up this uh, conversation more in detail, sure. uh, related to that, and also at the same time uh, related to your own practice as Semi sure. Hakim as a chef, and also Semi Hakim as a social entrepreneur. Maybe, maybe we <laughs> call it that way. You know, uh, that's however, you're a big like. title, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wrote, written in bold, <laughs> and yeah, everything. I know. <laughs> uh, but, um, yeah, t uh, tell us uh, a little who are uh, who is Semi Hakim, <laughs> sure. So, um, I mean, um, not surprisingly, just like uh, my other co founder of uh, Kirk, we both coming from a chef background. Um, yeah. so I'm coming from a chef background, I'm coming from a kitchen, but my career didn't go through kitchen. Um, mm -hmm. I, uh, I studied um, culinary education in, um, in Istanbul after I graduated from tourism management in Istanbul also. Uh -huh. And then I went, um, did like small time internships in Spain. Then I came back to Istanbul and I realized I just don't want to be in the kitchen. I want to learn more about the kitchen. I want to do, um, do learn about the Anatolian culture, do learn about the, uh, the, the food in Turkey and how it's been produced and what's the idea behind it. There, uh, we started this um, this project with this uh, with you guys that we started to researching about Anatolian food, and it was an interdisciplinary project. Um, therefore, we kept going for several years, and uh, during that time, I did quite a lot of events in um, in Germany and in Turkey also. Uh, and while also I was doing that, I worked for um, Slow Food as um, as part of the projects in within Balkans and Turkey. Uh, mm -hmm. about protecting and raising awareness towards the small-scale producers and helping to somehow influence the policy towards them and also creating sort of like a common ground for them to get together and support their production cultures. Um, mm -hmm. So um, I started basically uh, after Kitchen, I started with, uh, with the past and today. And after I done with it, I also did, um, did the consulting for a uh, for uh, Mark Talenoin, based in Berlin, which is um, which is basically a place, a safe haven, even for um, small scale producers, um, artisan producers, as such, in a in a new uh, food ecosystem, in a in a in a new uh, new generation of a market. So I did a mm -hmm. consultancy in there back and forth Berlin. So I've been traveling a lot for uh, for several years now. 
Um, so after all of this, after all uh, connections within past and today, I realized I want to move forward. I want to move. I want to see what's 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 the next step. What is the next burger? What is the next uh, big, big company? What is the next thing about food? Uh, I realized I want to go into the future rather than the back. I, I don't want to stuck in the past. I want to go future. Um, mm -hmm. During that time, we started having conversations with Shirley, and Shirley was also really keen on doing that because Shirley is also coming from a chef background, leaning towards to um, financial and organization side, rather also um, also doing research and R and D at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, so we started having these conversations, and what we like uh, finally coming around is that. We just don't want to do one project and try to figure out how we can do it better. We realize during this all time in our experiences, there's so many good people and so many good projects happening all around the world. A lot of them also, a lot of projects in Turkey also. But there's no interconnections within either globally or either uh, have a chance to have great mentors or have a chance to have great investors behind it. So uh, we realize we need to create a platform, uh, either physically or digitally, or at the same time, uh, that can connect the people who are into food, want to do projects on food, and or even maybe creating a new concepts for a restaurant, but don't know how. Finding people that know how, uh, finding the people can help out, or even in the next level, finding people to get invest in them. So mm -hmm. uh, we believe in this uh, in this sense of approach because we believe this will create a sustainable and healthy ecosystem reason being people who are within the food in a different sections you can take it from agriculture you can take it from distribution you can take it from consumption or uh, just scale it down into a simple restaurant mm -hmm. there is no connection within in the food ecosystem there are organizations, there are uh, amazing uh, organizations, amazing um, food research groups, amazing food institutes, awful lot of them. But the problem is there's no connection within. One of the key issues regarding this topic is that I think they've been working on it in UC Davis in, in, in California about thinking about, um, we need to figure out a way to, uh, to a new platform for food. They call it Internet of Food. Mm -hmm. it's, it's really about uh, it's really about um, information and data management uh, also, but it's about what is the, uh, like what do you create what for, like what do you go for food, etc. So it's the big data, it's really important because it really affects like how you consume and what you prefer and how you also produce. It's, a, it's, a, it's really interconnected in a sense because agriculture is connected with distribution and distribution is connected with consumption. It's a, it's a big picture, but there is no frame. So mm. me and Shirley, we realized, okay, we want to create this frame. Um, we want to create the connection globally, not in Turkey specifically. We want to create connection within the countries, within the continents, and within projects so that can be involved each other to help out and create support to each other. And not just for um, um, idealistic or philanthropic reasons, but it's for creating a sustainable um, food ecosystem. Uh, but, um, that's briefly. Yeah, you travel also a lot, right? You know, uh, you see, you meet with, uh, with 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 many people who are who are involved in this kind of issues, and also, yeah, exactly. and um, how do you see it? For example, you know, the frame that you stated sounds like quite big thing, right? You know, it sounds yeah, like it is. Big, it's like a it, it's like a local. Uh, entrepreneurial idea not only entrepreneurial idea but also you know it's like a social gathering it's it has this uh, social uh, part of it and it's uh, at the same time it has this uh, organizational part of it investors part of it so uh, you know it sounds like quite something big so uh, when you when you share this idea with the uh, with all of these people that you meet uh, what is their reaction because um, sure. uh, how do you, how, how do they feel about it I mean, honestly, every time I talk about this, wherever I go, either either Italy or um, or states or even here in Australia, whenever I say this, and I always hear the same reaction: Yes, we need this. Uh, just like today, I'm in a in the symposium of symposium of Australian gastronomy, um, and we um, 
listened to this um, this presentation about um, a culinary school uh, kicking out their uh, curriculum and instead of changing it towards to food design. So it's a culinary school, but they are actually teaching designs. They teaching design thinking. They are teaching to the um, the the cook, the chef, well, cook nominees to. Mm -hmm have a sense of uh, what is concept and what is menu actually and what do you pair it with design and how do you um, prototype and how do you research etc. So all of the design thinking, you know better than me for sure. Yeah. So um, so therefore uh, they're talking about this and he said when I started saying okay I want to build up this global network so that you can share your message, you can share your works and he was like yes we need that, we need to be heard, we need to be known. Um, and it's not just about having uh, followers in Facebook or having followers on Instagram or any other social media or you know, mainstream media. They have mm -hmm. qu quite a lot of followers um, for uh, for a design school. I think they have like seven thousand or eight thousand people in the in the Facebook page. I just checked it. I mean, it's not it's good. I mean, it's not bad. Uh, but come to think of it, like the content, etc. But they want to be heard because they are doing something different. They kicked yeah. their curriculum out. And adapt their um, their, uh, their facilitators, their teachers, into this kind of thinking, mm -hmm. and in a way they change quite a lot of people because of that. Because there's a lot of people doesn't want to accept the fact that interdisciplinary food works are the future. So they said, if you don't want to be part of this revolution, then you have to go. And they they changed their um, their people in the school. Not mm -hmm. they didn't kick them out. They somehow left some of them. They didn't want to stay, etc. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. it's it's really brilliant. It's amazing, and it's so it's a warm example for me. But yeah. then again, we'll talk about this later on for sure about creatur. But mm -hmm. whoever I speak about creatur, uh, regarding from especially in in the in the um, in the in the food works or um, or part of the food works, they always say the same thing. They say it's a brilliant idea mm. because we need a connection. It's not it's not a it's not a million dollar idea, but it's about being human and being connected to each other because mm. it's it's about sharing information and putting more into it so that you can accomplish more. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, later on, I will put here something. <laughs> I, 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 I will edit this video and uh, yeah. <laughs> I think I will share something in here and also something up there. So uh, <laughs> maybe maybe I can share a couple of uh, photographs that you shared, you know, uh, related, to yeah, this, yeah, yeah, uh, sure. related to this conference that you are uh, right now a part of. And, Please, uh, you know, they will appear somewhere here around. And, yeah. uh, <laughs> and um, uh, so um, until now, uh, uh, how much time passed since the day that you started Co Project? Uh, we started in uh, December. Uh, it was around. It was around end of December. We uh, we um, started talking about how we're gonna move forward and what's the idea behind it and what should be the name. Um, uh -huh. Shirley was in New York, I think, that time. And uh, we started talking about how we can move forward, etc. Uh, the name uh, Kirk, uh, it represents um, the um, the raison theory, you know, the French theory about uh, being basically interconnected but also independent at the same time. Uh, so we we believe this name represents that to us, and uh, because we try to achieve a lot of different projects based on food but also part of the same ecosystem mm -hmm. while it's interconnected to each other but on a one uh, big tree let's say but there's a lot of different roots so yeah. chuck means root so therefore we we um we reference to that but we got a lot of um comments on saying so you want to go back to your roots and mm -hmm. we're like no we it's the quite opposite we want to go forward like from it so like mm -hmm. You want to find more ways to to research. So this is almost a year now. Yeah, and um, while I was uh, sharing uh, what you do um, with with these people that I get in contact in here in Paris or um, anywhere else, uh, I show pictures for sure uh, that I can find in Facebook. And uh, it seems like you organize a lot uh, a lot of uh, meetings, and uh, you call them meetups basically. Oh, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Other than that, you uh, also organize some kind of workshops. Can you also uh, 
uh, sure. explain it briefly sure, sure, what sure. you already uh, had done until today maybe sure sure so um as you said we did a lot of uh, a lot of events and a lot of meetups so i can divide it into three categories and what we are doing actually um so First one, uh, it's an easy one to explain uh, after all the talks we had about the innovation and the in interconnection. It's the community building. So mm -hmm. for that, uh, we organized with uh, Stageco uh, in, in Izmir also, Istanbul there also in both cities, uh, together uh, food and tech meet meetups and um, food and tech startup weekends. Mm -hmm. Then uh, we moved uh, into um, uh, Kirk Talks, basically inviting uh, food entrepreneurs and food innovators or activists, food activists, to talk about their idea behind the, the future of food. Because mm -hmm. that's our narrative. We care for future of food. Therefore, we ask every um, speaker who wants to, like, who accept to join in and have a, uh, give a speech, we say, tell us what you think about future of food. Uh, we are working to building a community based on um, rather food innovation to create their their projects and uh, get support and somehow maybe if they can turn it into a business model or uh, or uh, bringing to people together to listen to people in, from different sections of food or having interconnections with the interdisciplinary or with food to mm -hmm. talk about that. That's the first part. And we've been doing this since um, August, I think. Uh, the, the last one in 2016 will be in a couple of weeks about, uh, it's called Cook Summit, mm -hmm. uh, which we will organize it in every season change, so four times in a year. We're going to organize it in, well, we're going to organize it in 23rd of December, but it's about, it's about the message mm -hmm. that we think. So we could, we, that's the proper date for us. But yeah. basically yeah. it's about the season changes. So that means for us, is that the talking about the next step, so season change, time change, what is the next step, what is the future? Um, we caught, in, in the event page, we quoted uh, a saying from a photographer saying, uh, winter is a bridge between the years, but in this occasion, it's a bridge between centuries. This is what we believe in this. Uh, the second type of the events uh, we do is the, um, is the the public space events? Um, the we we did the first one with a culture and research institute called Salt, which is based in Istanbul. Um, we organized an event uh, with a um, with a with a wood oven that has been built for a project called Seed Journey, uh, mm -hmm. which which aimed to um, carry out um, uh, heirloom and heritage seeds from Norway. To uh, to Çatalhöyük in Turkey with a ship. So mm -hmm. well, in one part they're gonna go from the land, of course, but you get the idea. So mm -hmm. um, they did the first event in in Istanbul. We did the first event in Istanbul together. It was called Kneading Together. So mm -hmm. we used that oven. We made bread together, and we talked about wheat and wheat production because Anatolia is the the birthplace for wheat, um, mm -hmm. as such a lot of uh, different ingredients also. So we organized the bread event with that. Uh, then uh, we organized another bread event this time, but it's called Urban Bakers. So Urban Bakers, it's about raising awareness uh, towards the, the urban bread production regarding in the artisan side. So talking about the artisan bread making within the city and how it's being looked upon and how people pr prefer and how they consume artisan breads. So we invite three bakers in each event. Uh, the next one will be in the 17th December. We invite mm -hmm. three bakers in each event. They talk about their story, their background, their thoughts on, on bread making, flour, sourdough, anything. They all have, everybody has a different story. So I want, we want to build up a platform for them to tell their story while they're baking the bread. And the third one we work with is the social integration. So uh, this project is we are working with the uh, municipality of Izmir. It's called Kök Basmane, which aims to um, to support the people who live in, in the Basmane district, which is a district is known by uh, an immigration district and has been having the flux of immigration for um, for years and years on. So that means a lot of people from the eastern regions and coming to the city, a lot of people from uh, Afghan, a lot of people from now Syria coming to the 
sometimes they come and go and sometimes they stay so what we want to do is we want to create a legal production side for them to protect their production cultures like home production that means like the breads and 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 maybe homemade pastas and tarhanas and that kind of like uh, jams or um, falafels of, uh, of Syrians in or Syrian bread um, this kind of production we want to um, protect and help out and also create an economical support for the families and for mm -hmm. the district so yeah. Our rhetoric on this is that social in integration can happen with food and will happen with food. Uh, hopefully, we will also work with uh, several uh, UN agencies in this project, hoping to create an international rhetoric for um, social integration through food. Mm -hmm. So, to summarize all, what I've been doing for a year, uh, it's to finding the, the, um, the human element on food. Human element is usually has been used as a negative um, statement saying it's, um, it's, it's, the, it's the unstable and unpredictable uh, factor in a formula. But we use human element in a sense Why? 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 Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. If you check, if you check the definition of human element, if you, check the human, if you check the definition of a usage of a human element, it usually goes like this. Okay, so we wanted to do this project based on this yeah. formula, but there was also a human element, so we couldn't. So it's, it's like this. So we, we look on the other side. We say okay. human element is the important, it's the key for food innovation. Um, that means we don't we we believe um, human uh, creativity and uh, approach that can change everything. So mm. that means the cook's work, the whole idea behind the cook's work, it's to create a huge rhetoric based yeah. on creative uh, lifestyle towards food. Mm. That means it's a reference to healthy lifestyle. Healthy so, lifestyle. Hmm. Yeah, go ahead, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I was, I was coming to that also because, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, maybe, maybe not directly uh, focused on the uh, healthy lifestyle, but then uh, um, when you are focused on food right now, the uh, food innovation, the term food innovation becomes like a quite big um, topic. Yeah. Um, everybody wants to do something related to food. At the same time, uh, I cannot, you know, I can understand this because it is in a way quite uh, related to the fundamental uh, consumption items, right? You know, um, sure. it is directly related to that. So there is a huge market. There is a big uh, industry. Uh, not only the industry, but uh, agricultural production is there. Packaging there, design there. You know, uh, consumption methods uh, is related to that and also uh, there is this uh, you know social aspect is 100 percent always integrated to all of these productions and uh, conceptions uh, processes mm -hmm. and um, how do you how do you frame this uh, concept called uh, food innovation you know where, where do you where do you look from uh, or you, you know what is your direction basically sure um so i I, I always get that question in the sense that I always want to answer that saying we don't put any lines towards to it mm -hmm. uh, because um, that means that a food innovation can also create another um, reaction to a, to a already a, already happening project or an idea. Food innovation can be defined as as simple as um, managing to uh, light up a fire and realizing you have to cook the meat or food innovation can be defined as Mm. Uh, asking the question, so what did the first man taught cracking the egg and whisking it and then put it in a pan and cooking it? Yeah. It's a process for sure. So cracking the egg, whisking it, and then cooking uh, now what we call today an omelette, it's actually a food innovation if you think about it. It's simple, okay. but it's so creative in a sense that imagine that you don't have anything. You don't have any access information. You don't have the education you have right now. You are really a simple... Uh, first human and yeah. you see you see a bird leaving something round and you 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 bite it first and you realize oh okay this doesn't taste good I need to take out the, the thing outside and then you mm -hmm. realize okay I take it I cracked it or maybe I should I should maybe I need some fire with it. it's a process so it's a simple process but let's take it to today you have the access of information you have the social media you have the archives of, of the pre 
works in your topic or whatever you research for. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's say you want to produce a, a more delicious onion. You can find out how you're going to produce a delicious onion with mathematics, with, with the information you can find or information you're going to research. There's a lot of agrotech projects in Turkey and in Europe, in, in, in different countries also, that focuses on more sustainable and more productive production. Uh, not necessarily using GMOs or other uh, supplements, uh, but also creating what is called good agriculture, uh, mm. good production. So um, in my definition of food innovation, I let people who want to work in, in, in that subject to mm -hmm. find their way how to move forward. Because simply put, if you work with a waste ingredient, let's yeah. say um, a waste from a cheese production, a, um, a whey, let's say, right? Uh, yeah. You want to build up a restaurant based on whey, let's say. For me, that's a food innovation because you're taking a waste product and you want to turn it into a concept, you want to turn it into a business model, and you're going to mm -hmm. use the whole whole fuel of this idea is coming from a waste product. So you're going to actually help producers, you're going to help the world, you're going to help the environment, you're going to help a lot. Mm -hmm. If you manage that, it creates its own economy, it creates its own environmental support, it creates its own flow of idea and information. I think it's yeah. brilliant. So yeah. you maybe don't I have to say... Mm, yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe maybe you you are right uh, because of that too. Because when you try to uh, pre-frame it, pre-frame it in any sense, then uh, you may also you may also uh, you know ignore some stuff at the same time. Because then that pre-frame uh, may become uh, some kind of some kind of dominating static frame itself. Then you know maybe you can you can you can forget to uh, question that thing too but at the same time uh, all these uh, all these um, topics and projects they are extremely uh, important right so exactly. when you when you don't when you don't um, yeah, speak about them in detail then um, anything is possible right anything is possible uh, exactly. to go in a, in a in a in a negative way but at the same time uh, you may cause something uh, quite strange at the end because it is it is For in a sure. way the nature nature of human nature of nature. <laughs> and, no, no, exactly, uh, exactly. Yeah, uh, so that's that's why maybe it is much more uh, proper to uh, talk about this kind of stuff with, with specific type of uh, on specific type of uh, projects with specific type of uh, you know frames. Uh, exactly. So, um, and I hope we will discuss in this uh, series of uh, broadcasts, by the way, so. Yeah, I hope so, too. I, I definitely agree with you. That's the sense. I mean, if you, if you take any creative discipline as such as yours, for example, architecture or design yeah. or um, any other discipline that involves creativity, that doesn't have any limit um, hmm. because the limit is you. You are the producer. Then you will have the, the challenges to, to produce better or... To, to express yourself better. So if you if you put lines towards food innovation, it's just about this. You only need to do this, etc. Um, it doesn't work. It's that's also one of the, the, the great parts of coming from a chef background because when chefs are always asking that why can't we do it this way? Why can I um, why can I serve a quince looks like a, a, a foie gras or yeah. why can I just um, serve I don't know. Uh, olive spheres looks like um, looks like caviar and serve it as a caviar. It's the same um, approach and same principle that demolishing the borders of creativity to create better uh, ideas. Uh, mm -hmm. This is what we're trying to achieve. Uh, we want to create rhetorics based on uh, like food innovation and food entrepreneurship, and finding common ground to help out the the, the seeds to sprout. Yeah, yeah, and uh, maybe, maybe, in this context also, because it's uh, directly related to that, we can talk a, a little about um, creature. Uh, oh yeah, because yeah. we mentioned about um, your own inter um, your own creation of this project, and then uh, we talked about uh, the issue of food innovation a little bit. Right now, I am in uh, Volumes Paris, and. Uh, they do have this beautiful uh, food lab, and they are doing quite interesting stuff. 
not only sure. related to you know laboratory kind of thing, but in lab mm -hmm. in in any sense, because um, yeah. there are people uh, from different neighborhoods coming here, or there are. Uh, some kind of uh, social cooking events are happening here, but at the same time, uh, there are the representatives of uh, big uh, companies coming here talking about their production, and then there are some of the people who are doing the same thing, but in a smaller scale, so they, they can have uh, some kind of platform to discuss this kind of stuff. And uh, this, is one of the node, this is one of the nodes in the world, in Europe, uh, in Paris, and there are yeah. also some other... Um, some other groups of people, some other initiatives who are dealing with that. And we also know that there are some others uh, in other uh, cities and countries. And um, there are co-working spaces, there are basically so-called, directly called food labs who are already yeah. established and working on these kind of stuff. So uh, combining uh, the thing that you said uh, related to Cook Project and uh, related to its possibility, it's own yes. possibility to create some kind of uh, platform for uh, for people who are focused on this issue, and uh, yeah. also creator. What will you say? It's it's I that's that's for me that is the summarize of the creator, um, yeah. because what we want to achieve in creator is that. Um, it's the finding, as I said, the common ground of the food entrepreneurship and food creativity. Right now in Europe, there's a lot of um, great um, food works, food labs, food spaces, or food startups that are actually working on their projects. But um, even if they're, they're, I don't know, like 200 kilometers apart from each other, they don't have any connections and they don't share information. Not necessarily keeping the information itself and creating this amazing project, etc. No, it's just there's no dialogue. It's because there's no place for dialogue. Mm. So what we want to achieve is that we want to initiate the dialogue. Uh, we just want to flame uh, up uh, up a little bit. Uh, so therefore, we want to visit 10 cities uh, in, in Europe next year, in 2017, to meet up with this um, creative hubs of the Europe and startup hubs of the Europe as such. Paris, for example, that's uh, one of the key cities for us as the volume co-working. Um, mm -hmm. To find the common ground, what makes people tick in, in Paris regards food innovation? How they approach this idea? How they approach food creativity? How they approach uh, food entrepreneurship? How they find investors? How they uh, lead up to their levels to find it better solutions to their problems, etc. Mm -hmm. So. What we want to do is that we want to bring together people working with um, local collaborators to hearing speakers and talking about their work and their approach and most importantly, their opinions of future of food. As I said, we are for future of food. Mm -hmm. So in, in, in Creature, we will uh, provocate even the speakers that are talking about their works but talking about their thoughts on future of food. Um, this is not about finding the million dollar project. This is about finding the common ground the, 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 in the food entrepreneurship. Uh, because if we want to archive all of this, we want to archive all the works and all the uh, ideas behind it, then when we finish up the speeches, we want to organize a food event. Because, uh, not because we are chefs and some of us are uh, like really into food and we just want to cook and share, no, no. We want to organize a food event after that because if we talk about, let's say, agricultural creativity, we need to eat agricultural creativity. We need to see the examples. We need to feel it. We need to understand it. Then the circle will be complete because those projects will also find the ground to, to flourish and talk about their work. Yeah. Maybe the, some audience they never talk, even if in their same city. Yeah. When we finish that, we while we have the videos and all the information, while we live streaming everything from social media, let's say we went to Barcelona or Bologna, mm -hmm. in that city then we can show the people saying, okay, so these speakers will talk about this maybe, in Paris they talked about this, in Amsterdam they talked about this, in Tallinn they talked about this actually. And in those cities I'm sure and I know that there's different approaches that will flourish during the way, or even people saying, oh, I never thought about this, I'll do it this way then. And we will be able to cr uh, connect these people 
into each other so that they can find help, mentorship, or even investment in a way. Uh, we want to create this system because we want to find, as I said, the common ground. It's possible. Uh, then uh, we're going to do it in every two years. We're going to do it in biennial basis. The reason right. being, uh, it's not just because of the amount of work or organization or cooperation. It's just about, we believe it's the timeline. So in 2017, we're going to do it in Europe. But in mm -hmm. 2019, we're not going to do it in Europe. Mm -hmm. We're going to do it in, in North America uh, or North America, South America maybe, or Asia, Australia. So mm -hmm. it will be, again, about creatures, uh, will be about creativity, food creativity, and food entrepreneurship, but it will be in a different geographical zones, different uh, people in different spaces. We're not doing creatures just the sake of doing it. We're doing it to create the dialogue between food innovators, let's say, within New Zealand to, mm -hmm. to Istanbul, to Delhi, to Shanghai, to, to San Francisco, to Barcelona. world is getting uh, this connection in a lot of different disciplines. A lot of people are actually interconnected with each other, especially the tech world. So why doesn't food? Food should mm. be connected specifically because future of food is so important for our lives. We need to figure out better ways to produce, consume, distribute, and even waste manage the food. Um, that's why we want to go for creative. Yeah, uh, sounds great. And uh, we'll see what will happen, right? And we will. I think we will continue yeah. to uh, discuss and uh, talk about this uh, when you are here in Paris. And at the same yeah. time, uh, we will continue to discuss this with all possible collaborators in time. And um, yes. I think we will be sharing uh, the, the improvement uh, at the end and everybody will uh, know uh, about it uh, before it happens. So they can also attend, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hopefully. Um, yeah. But um, yeah, thank you, Semi, for being a part of no, uh, this broadcast. Uh, we can also uh, experience the the dawn of uh, or sunset let's say sunset of uh yeah. albert <laughs> behind of you yeah, sorry you know, I, I i look like batman right now so <laughs> yeah. talking yeah. from yeah. the shadows yeah, yeah, and, exactly um, sorry for that some kind I, of, I, some, I, yeah some kind of some kind of um guy <laughs> in disguise you know i'm uh, I'm, I'm like a villain now <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah and um yeah take care and um we will continue uh uh, with all broadcasts from uh, Volume Paris for for your uh, own information, the ones for the sure. ones who are watching this right now. Uh, so uh, keep on watching us. We will be sharing everything on uh, Facebook and uh, through all accounts that we have. Uh, Creator, not yeah. yet, but Cook Project for sure, and yes. uh, Nobon and uh, Contract and okay. uh, Volume yeah. uh, Volume Paris also. So. Um, Semi, um, keep us updated. <laughs> by I, will, I will. Thank by you. Shaving. Thank you for thank you for having me here, man. All right. Uh, take yeah. care.